Good morning, folks. One of the best habitable worlds ever discovered is reviewed here today. We've got a hit on the earthquake prediction and shots of the natural disasters around the world. But we're going to begin at spaceweathernews.com, checking out the last day on our star. No eruptions, but we've got the coronal hole approaching center disk from the left with thinner dark plasma filaments to the north and out ahead. The filaments become the top eruption threat on our star as of now, and that is because the sunspots are small and uninteresting, even with another new group born yesterday north on the left. They are in no hurry to bring back the solar flaring. We are all quiet on the sun, and we're calming back here at Earth as well. Solar wind telemetry shows the speed peak in yellow is now winding down, and the disruptions to Earth's magnetic field are waning as well. Well, folks, yesterday morning, just about an hour after uploading the news, a magnitude 6.8 struck Burma. You might know it as Myanmar. There were casualties and a number of ancient temples very badly damaged. And in terms of the earthquake warning, it began two nights ago, saying the quake uptick should begin the next day, which was yesterday, the 24th. And while the few hours it took to analyze all the charts means that the magnitude 6 in Indonesia just four minutes before that post was actually studied and forecasted much earlier than that, hadn't even come up on the feeds yet by the time we made the Twitter post, but it still does not count temporally. However, it did put Southern Asia on a greater local alert compared to Japan and South America, and you heard that again in yesterday morning's news when we said that South Asia was on watch from the active areas to the west, and that means the candy cane. Yes, the Indonesia six-pointer hit southern Asia, but that's what I call the end of the sideways candy cane. For those who don't know, when we call South Asia on alert, it's the Papua New Guinea region across west to Sumatra, north to the Indian coastlines, and back round to Taiwan, maybe even southern China. The earthquake struck the curved handle of the candy cane. This is very different from calling out the Southwest Pacific, like we did on the morning of August 11th, when about 15 hours later a seven-pointer struck that area. Southwest Pacific is New Zealand, and just to the north, just west of that, begins the South Asia candy cane, FYI. Anyway, that area may see aftershocks or even more rumbles, but with a typhoon pulling a Yui next to Japan, I have to come back to that OLR prediction two nights ago as well. Eyes open in both regions. And speaking of earthquakes, death toll surged to nearly 250 in Italy overnight as the rumble belies the death beneath. Prayers there, but chins up thereafter, folks, because this couldn't be more interesting. The closest star to our sun likely has a habitable planet. Its conditions have changed a good bit over the years, but the radiation and chemical profile means a water world cannot be ruled out, and our stellar neighbor Proxima Centauri may be hosting life at this very moment. Two papers out on archive as well that go into very fine detail. Back to the sky where tornadoes and severe weather dropped in Indiana and Ohio yesterday. Luckily, it might be a slightly lighter day for the U.S., but not without a look ahead at the tropical system heading for Florida. The next 48 hours will tell us everything about the storm coming through, so let's have eyes open, everyone. Got a new Deeper Look episode out for website members last night. Billy just accidentally taught everyone how the global electric circuit could be biased towards fault lines. We've got a world on the wind map and shots of our star to close. It's 4.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.